um, of our adult summer reading library programming uh, resource guide review. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam Bowers. I'm the consultant for continuing education at the State Library of Iowa. We have several State Library folks joining me today. Marianne Mori is our consultant for Central District. She's going to be leading us through the bulk of the presentation this morning. And then the lovely Janae Jackson-Doring and Eunice Riesberg will be taking us uh, through some of our discussion time this morning. So uh, my thanks to them and to Marianne for putting these slides together. Um, and Marianne, why don't you go ahead and uh, get us started here? Thank you so much. Okay. Well, as Sam said, welcome to 2024 Summer Library Programming um, Source Guide Training for um Let's see, I'm going to jump in here, here just briefly slide. here. Oh, maybe it picked up. Marianne, I'm having issues with your audio. I wonder if maybe you want to try stopping your video here and see if we get a better feed from your audio. Okay, is this a little better? Actually, that does sound better to me initially here. Let's roll with that. All right. Well, as Sam said, welcome to our 2024 training session uh, for the adult summer reading program, where the theme is read, renew, repeat. And if you've never done an adult summer reading program, I encourage you to attempt that this year or at least get some ideas that perhaps you'll feel encouraged to try it next year. Even if you don't have an adult summer reading program this year, I think you'll get some great ideas for programming that you can implement any time of the year. And many of the ideas we'll be sharing today are suitable for teen programming and or for all ages program. Um, we had a little technical glitches here this morning, so I'm hoping I can advance the slides. And right now I can't. Um, so, Janae, you may have, it's completely disappeared for me to be able to advance the slide. There we go. Maybe now I can. Okay. And Sam already introduced our presenters and facilitators, so we'll just jump past this. Um, Sam. You had some yes. a question, I think. Well, I think now we might have two of you attempting to advance the slides, um, but let's sit back here to the uh, orange slide. Thanks for your patience, everyone, this morning. Eunice just finished saying, why do you do these in the morning? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she's not wrong. Some days it seems like uh, you need a little chance to settle in here. Let's head back a slide or two. One more back, I think. And I'm showing I have the orange slide up right. now. Okay. Well, so we were going to do this in an interactive um, Slido, but we attempted not, we decided to not tempt the technology fates any more than they're already angry at us today. But let's go ahead and pull up that chat box. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do a little emoji game a little feeling game. So um, down in the chat box, you should be able to choose your emoji. How are we feeling about adult or all ages programming? Uh, for me, it's there's a little smiley face and uh, then I can scroll through all the regular emojis I get on my cell phone. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing a laugh, I'm seeing a surprise, thumbs up. Ooh, I like Jordan, she's got a flamenco dancer going. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> a wink? I want to know what that one means. Uh, but in general, lots of happy faces. Oh, another surprise. I, think I did see a tear in there once. <laughs> <laughs> one tear, one clown. <laughs> this is fun. I think it can be a little intimidating uh, programming for adults, especially if it's not something that your library does on the regular. Um, but uh, I think it's a lot of fun uh, to engage um, if you're, especially if you do a lot of kid and teen programming can be a lot of fun to engage a new user base. I like the smiling cat, Sarah's thinking, <laughs> Angie is happy tears. That's a lot of fun. All right. Well, I'm, I'm glad that in general, the group is excited. 
Um, we've got Woodbury County who's thinking. That's good. If you're thinking, you're in the right spot. Uh, let me go ahead and just share a couple things about downloading the resource guide. Uh, I'm sure many of you have already done this, but in case you haven't, oh, Nick, that's a nice little emoji. He's got my, one of my favorite little woozy emojis. I like that one. Um, um, if you have not yet downloaded the resource guide, a couple things I always like to remind people of. So um, it would have come to all library directors, um, I believe, towards the end of or early November, all library directors received in their email instructions on how to download the resource guide. If you have not yet seen the resource guide, your first step is to talk to your library director uh, to see that they receive that email and what they've done with it. Uh, if you talk to your director who says, wow, I haven't seen anything like that, then reach out to Janae and she can pop her, her email into the chat, but Janae can resend that information as well here. Um, uh, to your director or to you. But the main thing is every library should download the resource guide. Yep, John, the iRead resource guide for 2024, they should download that one time per library. So once it's downloaded, put it on a flash drive or a shared network drive or, you know, your staff computer, whatever, whatever the case might be, uh, but download it once and then you can move it around where you need to. It comes in two humongous zip files. Like we have really good internet in our state facilities. And it took me like over 20 minutes to download um, the resource guide. So be aware that it might be something you want to start, uh, especially if you don't have fast internet, start before you leave work and pick it up in the morning. Uh, but be aware that it takes a very long time. Then you're going to get these two big zip files. Um, I have had the best luck with these when uh, once they're downloaded and they're in my downloads folder um, to extract them. So right click, choose extract, and then put them first to a local place, like your computer's local hard drive. Once they're in that local place, then you could move them to a network drive or a shared drive or something, uh, or a flash drive, whatever your library is gonna do just to, to make this stuff accessible to all staff. Um, but that extraction should happen first to a local place has been my best, best bet with this. Um, we'll distribute these slides afterwards. That link up in the corner is also like a little bit of instruction for you. But uh, you'll have two files here, the art and graphics and the resource guide, uh, which is the like sort of idea book, basically. Um, so here's here's what it looks like once you extract those files. Um, if you're familiar with the CSLP programming, they always called it a manual. So you might hear us say, say that word sometimes, that's kind of what we mean by this, but uh, that resource guide is gonna have hundreds and hundreds of pages of uh, program ideas, um, display ideas. My personal favorite is the bibliographies. So they have humongous book lists for all ages that you can use to promote the summer reading theme. I love it, um, they're so helpful. And then this year also, I redid the art a little differently. Last year, they in previous years, they've had like, here's the kids art, here's the teen art. Uh, this year, they just list them all out by the different artists. And there's not really any, I won't even say restrictions, because it was never restrictive. Uh, but there's not even really anything that says, this is the art we intended for kids. You get to look at it all and say, hey, I think my kids would love this artwork. I think my teens would love this artwork. I love Jason Chin so much, I'm going to use him for all my artwork and not even feel a little bit guilty about it, which is great. That's all up for you. So um, I think Marianne is going to talk us through um, using this, using the guide a little bit and, um, and then again, some of the artwork. So I'll stop talking. But if you have questions about downloading the resource guide or you run into any issues, uh, just reach out. We will, uh, we'll be glad to lend a hand if we can. And I see somebody asked in the chat, what month was this guide sent to directors? Hey, that was October, I believe. I will look up the exact date here. Oh, November 6th is what Janae November. says. So it should November have come 6th. to directors okay. on November 6th. If you don't have it, uh, reach out right. to Janae. She's kind of been the person coordinating, getting that resent for us as needed. So as you're using the guide, you'll note that there is a key to some of the programming, which 
is just all clustered together in those early pages. And Samantha was not exaggerating when she's hundreds and hundreds of pages of resources. But the program guides, uh, keys that she'll want to look for on the programs that are in are these ones that we have in the box here on the slide. A, which is for adult, F for family, and double A, which is all ages. And those will be the programs most suited to your adult attendees. But don't overlook some of the ideas for teens because many of those ideas can have great appeal for adult audience. Let's see if I can get the slides to advance. I am so sorry. Janae, can you go to the next one? I don't even have the option to click anything. It's not cooperating. There, I see it. So this is an example of one of the adult programs. You can see the letter A there next to the title of the program. I was kind of excited about this one because it's a bicycle program about getting your bicycle uh, ready for riding for adults. And normally we think of bicycle aspects as kids programs, maybe from a bike rodeo. But this program encourages your adults to renew their bike and get in the habit of riding on a repeat basis. So how cool is that for the summer reading theme? Uh, here's another example of a nature walk. This one you can see is recommended for adults or families, or all ages. So I thought this was a really nice one to encourage people to get outdoors. And Sam, I think, is going to talk a little bit about the graphics. Sure, I can do that. So you remember from our... Um... From that screenshot I had up earlier, we have all the different authors, or all the different artists, excuse me. But once you dig into each artist's name, uh, you'll see a number of different types of uh, graphics that can be used, again, kind of however you like. Um, uh, those little badges are super fun if you have a button making program or you um, award badges based on different reading achievements or program achievements, whatever you want to call it. Um, they come in numbered and unnumbered little badges, which is super fun. So you can level up all the way to nine or 10, or you can simply use the cute little, little, little graphics. Of course, the, the, sp the spot art, just a lot of fun to throw on different posters or t-shirts or whatever. Um, they do have a couple of different languages. Um, I think, well, for sure, every artist, I think, has a Spanish language version of their, their poster already built in. Um, but then the thing we love, love, love to say about iRead is that you can take those graphics and pretty much do whatever you want with them. So if you've got someone on staff that's, you know, handy with Canva or, or Photoshop or something like that, super um, easy for them to grab those different files and, and make edits, put your library logo on, add languages that are going to be more relevant to your specific community, whatever it is, you have the rights to do all of that. Um, the other thing I always like to say about graphics, which is um, just as someone who is so not a graphics person, I mean, ask Janae, she's constantly saving my bacon when it comes to graphics work. But um, once you dig into those graphic files, it gets a little overwhelming because there are so many different file types. Um, a JPEG is going to be just kind of your most that's going to be a really standard fo fo image file you can plunk on pretty much everything. I learned something last year, which is that a PNG file, I don't even know if there's a cool way to say that, um, is has a transparent background. So if you wanted to print something that's a little bit more cut out looking on you know, a blue piece of paper and you didn't want the white square behind it, that PNG file is uh, going to be your best bet to have a transparent background. If you have someone on staff that's really image savvy, they also have, um, I think they're called like vector files in there so that they can sort of play with the layering and make it look super duper fancy if they want to. I'm not your girl for that one, uh, but someone else on your staff might be. So feel free to dig around and explore what's there. Here's a little sample of the different artists we've been talking about. I love the elephant librarian from Jason Chin. He's gotten a lot of love in the chat and not without reason. Uh, there's so much fun, um, all his little things. The outdoorsy stuff from Holly Bradley and Zoe. Oh boy, Persico is also really fun. Um, if you're gonna lean a little bit more into the outdoor type things, I think you've got uh, some great options there. 
I think James Stanley had art last year too. So if you had teens that teens or adults or anyone who connected with that art, um, a great chance to reuse uh, some of those fun images as well. Yeah, and these are just five of the the main artists whose work is featured. But there were also, a, I think, a couple other artists, and Janae might be able to chime in the chat with that. But there is so much artwork, so I encourage you to look at it. But I want to give you a tip. If I can get my slide to advance. Janae, I may need your help again. The option for me to advance is completely gone. There we go. Okay, so you go to the resource guide. You will see a page like this, and um, you can whoops, you can scroll down. Looks like we advanced too much this time. You can scroll down that page, and you can see the artwork all listed there without having to click on individual files throughout this morning. Um, but that was a simple way to see the graphics. Otherwise, if you go straight to the um, art and graphics files, you're going to have to uh, click, click, click and open each individual file. So I think this is a great way to be able to see the artwork very quickly and easily. Um, so one thing that I like to do, hoping my slides will advance, I like to think about the theme title and just brainstorm little bit on my own. Theme title this year is Read, Renew, Repeat. So if we can just have you chime in on the chat, and what are some ideas that first pop into your head, whether it's books, ideas? Um, let's go back just one slide. And while people are starting to put ideas in the chat for how you want to do uh, the read, renew, repeat, I'm going to do just a couple more technical things here. Marianne, I am going to chat to you the uh, phone number. So you can maybe use your cell phone to call in uh, as I'm still having some audio problems. Sure. And let me grab um, a phone real quick. Sure. Yep. And then uh, Janae, I think we'll leave the slide control to you. All right if that works. So while you guys are doing that, we're going to take a minute here to um, to just shift some technical things around. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Okay, Sam, have my yep. trusty phone here. Yay. Here we go. I see you post. All right, we'll give this a try. Now that I have, I'm not the best at multitasking today. <laughs> Let's see. Let's scroll through some of the ideas. How are we taking the theme? Ooh, upcycling. That's such a good one. Handmade paper making. Oh, yes. Here's a fun story about me. Um, I took a paper making class from a MacArthur Genius Grant Award winner. This is like maybe one of the like only cool things about me. I'm so not cool. Um, but uh, the, the University of Iowa Center for the Book uh, was home to Timothy Barrett, who had studied uh, paper making techniques in ancient Japan, in Japan, like ancient paper making techniques in modern Japan, and then came to the University of Iowa of all places. And um, my last year of undergrad, I was able to take a paper making class uh, from him. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Repair cafe. I love that. Repurposing. Yes. I'm also seeing a lot of um, a lot of wishes and hopes here for uh, uh, programming on the cheap, uh, which I'm sure a lot of libraries like. 
a speaker from the recycling center or your local um uh your local perhaps landfill would be so interesting to see all right marianne is that you It is. I have turned off all my uh, microphones, but I think I'm getting an echo. Yep. Let me see what I can do about that here. Of all days for tech to stop working. Would you mind on your Zoom on your computer, just click leave computer audio? Done. All right. Is that better? Yeah, That is there better, we go. I think. Okay, fabulous. Uh, hopefully you can still see the chat. We've had some great ideas come through. We're ready to see what's next. Janae has control of the slides, so we'll let her run that. Okay, and I love that you get to take the Japanese paper making class. That sounds amazing. So uh, here are some quick ideas we thought of under the topics of read, renew, repeat. So reading, wow, if, if this isn't the time to... brag about your book club. This is certainly the time to do it. And I thought it might be fun if you highlighted the best of your book club, which kind of ties in with the repeat aspect. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, maybe doing um, a display or for your book club books you read in high school, or maybe books you didn't actually read in high school, but were supposed to have read in high school. <laughs> you might reread those as an adult and see them totally differently than you did when you were a youngster. Um, having displays about staff or patron favorites, uh, maybe the best book ever, uh, having people vote for what their best favorite book was. Um, this is also a time, as you'll see in a, a, a future slide, about promoting your bridges, playaways, any other types of reading materials you have in your library. For renewing, I see someone in the chat posted something about self-care. Definitely, that kind of ties in, too, with relaxation programs and stress relief. Repair Cafe, information about that in a moment. And I saw that someone posted in the chat about upcycling. We have some details about that, as well as a, a webinar that will help you learn more about that. Um, maybe getting acquiring some new skills or doing some swaps. I'll explain more about that in a moment. For repeat, the first thing that popped into my head were your classic TV collections you might have in DVD collections or um, classic movies. Rereads your all-time favorite books. Habits, developing new habits because that's a repeat aspect and that could be a fun thing. Also, some of your digitization tools, if you have those available. And um, maybe looking at the highest circulated items at your library and featuring those like the top 10 most circulated books. And I think we have a slide that demonstrates that in the next one here. Janae, if you can advance that. There we go. Oh, yeah, this, this one is actually where we're actually going to share some ideas um, and go ahead and click again. Because most of these are our ideas. Well, actually, we got them from some other libraries. Um, we figure you can look in the manual and find plenty of ideas there. So these are some uh, supplemental, uh, complementary ideas that we came up with as well. So let's take a look at what those might be. We're going to start out looking at the theme of read. So if you don't have a book club or if your book club has been struggling, we have a webinar for that. We just presented that uh, this webinar that you see here this past uh, fall, I think it was. And this webinar has, uh, I believe it was three different Iowa librarians as panelists talking about their book clubs and ways to um, create a book club, way to maybe rejuvenate a book club. There's another R word for you, rejuvenate. Um, so this is available on our YouTube channel and in Iowa Learns. I would encourage you to watch this webinar just to get some fresh ideas for your book club because that's a great way to promote the read aspect of this summer reading thing. Um, these are a few titles that you might want to consider for a book discussion. This first one by Eve Schaub. I recently discovered her and really like her writing. This is her third book. Um, each of her books talks about a year of no something. She did a year of no sugar and a year of no clutter. This one, year of no garbage. I have not read it yet, but I assume it will be as entertaining as her first two books. She's funny. She's insightful. Um, just published this past spring. Wasteland is another new title just published this past summer. It is a thicker book, 
but um, a pretty um, insightful, more serious look at, as you can see on the title, Waste and Wasteland. And then this is an older title that some of you may have in your collection. In fact, I know some communities use this as an all-community-wide book a few years back. It's called No Impact Man, uh, where the author tried to go for an extended period of time, I think a whole year with no trash. Quite an interesting story. So those could be some fun books for a book discussion. Uh, you can also highlight some of your books in display. So we already mentioned this, uh, doing a, a basic check in your um, automation system to find out what titles, adult titles, have checked out the most and then doing a display of those. So that's kind of a quick and easy way to make a display there. As I mentioned earlier, this is also a time to promote bridges. Playaways, if you still have audiobooks on CD, you could certainly promote them at this time of year for your summer read reading portion. Uh, your large print collection, graphic novels, local history collections, any other special uh, reading material types of collections that you have at your library, this would be the ideal time to start promoting those. Let's look at um, how you can renew just a few uh, programming ideas that would tie in with that. So you mentioned upcycling in the chat, and there's a webinar for that too. The State Library, if you, oh, was that just last year, I think, Samantha, a few months back, we did an upcycling kernels, and kernels, as you recall, are short pops of training from in practicing librarians here in Iowa. And this one was done with a librarian from Pella Public Library who did a really creative upcycling program where the materials used were all materials that were saved from the library, detritus from library stuff. So uh, for instance, receipt rolls and um, old CD cases and such. So that's a really cool, uh, roughly 30 minute session there that you can watch and learn more about upcycling. And go ahead, uh, um, Janae, because we have another upcycling example. Um, this one coming from uh, Carnegie Stout Library, where they did an upcycled art show as part of an Earth Day presentation. So think back to what you may have done at your library for Earth Day, and a lot of those ideas could probably be reutilized um, for the summer reading program. John, great to see that this is your library. This could also be the perfect summer to take some of your weeded books and turn them into a program where the participants upcycle them into works of art. Uh, programming Librarian has a blog about this, and I'll just say if you've never accessed the Programming Librarian, you may want to Take a look at that, lots of great programming ideas, not just about repurposing uh, withdrawn books, but many other programming ideas. And actually on the next slide, you'll see that the iRead manual has instructions on page 49 of the Getting Started section for how to make a folded book flower, which I'm assuming this is a more simple aspect of using recycled books to create something pretty, and I think it is very pretty. This next slide, um, we have to talk about smash journaling. This was a great uh, Kernels episode that Samantha and Janae did from a year ago when they mentioned briefly in a summer reading training about smash journaling, and everybody wanted to know about smash journaling. So this is a way that you can take a notebook and uh, repurpose it for something really special. So there again, another webinar for that to learn more about doing that. And that would be a great program for adults or for teens or even for all ages. Another aspect about renewing is to host a repair cafe. Um, this is a wonderful way to help people learn how to renew items that may be around their home that maybe just need a little bit of repair. And Ames Public Library has hosted a repair cafe a few times now. The iRead manual talks about how to develop a repair cafe. See page 82 of the guidebook. And um, if you're not familiar with what a uh, repair cafe is, you can see in the green box there that it aims to reduce waste share tools and resources, and help build self-reliance skills in the community. So repair cafes rely on volunteers who are experts in their field. You might have a seamstress help people learn how to sew buttons or patch holes in sweaters, or 
someone who knows about small engines could help with some lawnmower repairs so you kind of get the idea. Again, you're relying on volunteers in your community. This next slide talks about puzzle and game swaps, which is what Ankeny Kirkendall Library has done. Um, the manual does talk about doing this. You can do swaps for all kinds of materials, not just puzzles and games, but craft supplies, um, even clothing. I've seen some libraries do a clothing swap. And in the next slide here, we've got a plant swap. Uh, the manual suggests on page 140 doing this. Lots of Iowa libraries have done such a program, including Waterloo, as you see on the slide here. Next, from Davenport Public Library comes this lib guide that's all about sustainable fashion. This includes information about upcycling clothing. I especially like what they have featured there um, on their lib guide where you make mittens from old sweaters. So this gives you an idea of what upcycling clothes might mean uh, included in, uh, in the library's Davenport's um, lib guide here is information about basic mending sewing on buttons and um, maybe hemming, those types of things. So really cool um, to think about some ways that you can help people learn these types of skills. Uh, Waukee Public Library did a program that was um, definitely ties in with Renew. They did one where they hosted a home sound bath program. And I have to admit that I had to um, kind of look this one up. So Janine, if you can go to the next slide, you can kind of see what a home sound bath is because they actually uh, prepared a video as part of their program. So that gives you an idea of using sound uh, for renewing and de-stressing. Um, there's an example on the next slide here from Massachusetts, a public library that used therapy dogs to de-stress. I think I might respond better to the dogs. Um, but this was a program they called De-Stress with dogs. So if you have anyone in your community with therapy dogs, this might be a good way and an all ages program to help people de-stress, relax, and be happy. The manual has several pages on this topic of unplugging and of libraries having quiet areas. I have recently done a fair amount of research on the topic of organization that included digital clutter aspects. So I have to say that I think a lot of people are craving ways to get away from so much technology noise. So read through these pages of the manual that you see noted here on the slide, pages 96 to 99 and see if your library can find a way to incorporate a quiet area for patrons to unplug and unwind. Uh, maybe it's because of a book I recently read, The Winter of Our Disconnect, which is an older title, but still a lot of fun and very interesting. But maybe it's because I just finished reading that, that I've been on a social, and the fact that I've been on a social media fast since the beginning of September. Um, I really connected with this idea on page 153 of the programming guide about having a, quote, screen-free week at your library, end quote. This program encourages folks to use less energy by spending less time on their devices and suggests that the library offer non-screen activities. You can do this as a family activity or as a challenge for adults by having them share a screen-free story during a designated time period to qualify as an entry into a special prize drawing, uh, with the prize being no uh, technology <laughs> prizes there. Um, in the next slide, you'll see that as an aside, there really is a National Day of Unplugging. I did not know this until I did some research on it. It's actually a global day of unplugging, which is a 24-hour period running from sundown to sundown, which starts on March 1st. Now, that's before summer reading. Um, you still have some time. You might be able to plan this, or you could just change the date and incorporate it as a day within your summer reading program and take that day to carve out Precious time to unplug, relax, reflect, and be active, visit the outdoors, and connect with loved ones. So um, you might try a renewal program at your library that is spa-like. Story City's Bertha Bartlett Public Library is hosting this event in just a few weeks. Spa, uh, spa night at the library. This is one where they have partnered with some local businesses to offer free samples. The Grand Pioneer Heritage Library previously offered a spa day where they made earrings, a sprint, sprint pendant, sorry, 
and Epsom salts. And then the uh, other graphic there is from a library in Florida where they did a whole week. They called it Love Yourself Week and had different activities that were spa related. Here's another Iowa library, Fort Dodge, who is hosting a coloring program for adults. And yes, adult coloring is still popular. So if it's been a while since you've done an adult coloring program or if you've never done one, here's your opportunity to try one. Uh, as you can see on the slide, the library provides the coloring sheets and the coloring utensils, or there's the option to bring your own. I don't know if Fort Dodge does this, but I know that a lot of libraries, when they do the adult coloring programs, they put on relaxing music in the background for this kind of event. The, uh, the manual has a whole section about mindful crafting for adults on pages 86 to 87 under the program development section. Uh, check out that portion to get some more ideas about mindful crafting, just some of the ideas where the adult coloring and knitting, things where you kind of sit and, um, for lack of a better word, kind of meditate while you're doing those crafts. So let's jump now to the theme of repeat, um, some ways you can repeat. And um, I, I think that the theme of repeat is perfect for promoting any old TV shows your library might have on DVD and rerun might be another R word to add to that list. I also thought about bees because um, bees are great at uh, repeating, recycling things, creating honey over and over. So if you have a beekeeper in your area, Ask them if they'd be willing to share their expertise at your library. I know that Gouda Kunz Public Library and State Center here in Iowa partnered with the Master Gardeners and County Extension, Extension to host a Beekeeping 101 webinar. You can also see that uh, Des Moines Public has done a similar program, and Sioux County had the Iowa Honey Queen come and visit. And yes, there is an annual Iowa Honey Queen. Um, so... See if you can get on the list to have that person come and talk about honey and bees. The manual has at least two mentions of beekeeping and pollinating programs. See pages 112 and 150 for the ideas shared there. Another idea about um, this theme would be habits. I mentioned that earlier. And here are some books you might want to consider. A topic Habits, Atomic Habits by James Clear is, has kind of become the new definitive title about habit forming. Uh, that could be a cool program or a summer reading book discussion title to include. Uh, that one was published in 2018, but as I said, it's still kind of the definitive book for habit forming. And a newer title uh, is Tiny Habits, Small Changes That Change Everything. And then an older title Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey is making a comeback just a few years ago. The 30th anniversary of that book came out. So any of those could be fun books to incorporate into your um, adult book discussion groups or to put on a book display. Um, West Des Moines Public Library here in Iowa actually did a program about creating healthier habits and lifestyle. They had an outside presenter come in, and this looks like it was a partnership with their county health department. So consider ways that you can partner with people who might be able to come in and do some of these types of programs for you. If your library has a tech lab or a similar space with equipment for the public to use to digitize photos or transfer VHS to DVD, this summer reading program theme of repeat is an ideal time to promote this service from your library. Uh, Johnston has such a space. So again, a way to repeat by um, rejuvenating some of those older resources you might have at your home that you can digitize. Another aspect that ties in with repeat is thrift shopping. And I was really amazed to see how many public libraries, if you just do a basic online search about this, uh, public libraries have promoted classes and resources that encourage thrifting. So if you have a local thrifter in your town, consider having them talk about the process of thrifting. Thrifting is allowing an item, whether it's clothes, tools, or household items, to repeat their life in a new home. Uh, this example on the screen is from Elk Grove Village in Illinois, and I see that Janine is saying in the chat, styling thrifted items. That could be a really fun program. I agree with you. 
Another aspect about repeating is um, pertains to food waste. Now, in my household, we have practically zero food waste, but I know of some households that don't even eat leftovers. They don't save them. They don't eat them. So this could be an interesting program where you um, encourage your patrons to consider uh, ways that they can promote, uh, look at resources you might have that you can promote and how they can learn to prevent food waste. Uh, this program came from the public library in Indianapolis, but I imagine your local extension office may have some resources to help you with this particular title or topic rather. On a similar note, the library at Kingston in uh, Ulster County, New York partnered with their local extension to do a creative leftovers program at the library. And as the program noted, it helped participants save money, time, and lower their carbon footprint all at once. So that kind of sounds like a win-win program to me. If your town has a community-wide yard sale, you could partner with them as one of the stops. And that's what the Friends of the Library at Hebron, Indiana Public Library did. They featured their uh, withdrawn books, DVDs, and CDs as one of the stops on the town-wide garage sale map. So a good way to partner with your community there and be able to encourage people to come to your book sale. There is a similar R word that you might want to consider adding to the summer reading theme, and that's reduce. Uh, reduce library fines if you haven't already eliminated them. This would be a great time to consider a trial run on that. Um, encouraging people to buy whole foods that would reduce packaging. Um, minimalism and decluttering is a wonderful way to uh, encourage reducing stuff, and that might tie in nicely with the summer reading theme. Um, reducing bills or dieting, reducing size. There are lots of different ways that you can um, incorporate the theme of reduce. And of course, using the library reduces the need for buying more books and movies. And I just want to point out on this slide, you see the term slow fashion mentioned. Slow fashion is um, the concept of clothing manufacturers who use quality materials to create classic styles that don't they're not faddish and they're not um, they're not cheap, but they're meant to last a long time. So that's kind of an interesting concept if you have someone in the area who might want to talk about that. And then, of course, if you have uh, any type of library of things, this is a wonderful time to promote that as a way to reduce the need for your patrons to go out and purchase these items. They could borrow them from the library. World War II had a slogan that was use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. And I found this historical poster that I thought was kind of funny. This person is patching the, the other guy's pants there as he stooped over repairing his basic um, non-fueled lawnmower. It's um, a manual lawnmower there, the old fashioned type of rotary lawnmower. So kind of fun. It made me think, are there any historical perspectives you might want to talk about as a program at your library, maybe focusing on Depression era or World War II aspects. And I don't know, maybe some of you have some ideas for some other historical aspects. Um, if you have any books or resources from those historical time periods, those times when people definitely had to upcycle, repair, and they found creative ways to do with less, um, how would you type in the chat there? Maybe some programming ideas you can think of that tie in with historical aspects. And Sam, I'm going to turn it over to you now to talk about uh, participation. Sure. Uh, I'll give you a break. I was just going to jump in and give you a break here, too, and mention, you know, Marianne has pulled up um, some different pages of the manual. And um, I will admit, I'm pretty techy, and I sometimes have trouble navigating through that ginormous manual. It's... Um, it's kind of hard to keep track of what's where. And so this might be where you would want to uh, reduce your printing load, uh, perhaps in our spirit of environmentalism here, as we've teased on all morning. Uh, but, you know, print out print out the things you need. Um, I do know people who um, print the whole thing and then you've got your old fashioned flags that can go in and whatnot. Um, but it is, I acknowledge, once you find something cool in the manual, I, I worry that I might not find it back. Uh, although I'm sure you'd, you'd figure out a way to do it. But uh, just be aware that when that manual gets nice and long, it can be hard to find stuff back. All right. So uh, some of these slides, if you've attended with Marianne and I, uh, this webinar in the past, um, th th there's going to be a lot of repeat here. But um, of course, we've spent a lot of time talking about some awesome programming. So who exactly can we recruit to come here? We came up with a few ideas 
of places that you can reach out to adults in your community. Uh, they're on the next slide here. But um, of course, uh, a song that we sing a lot here at the State Library is uh, to partner with other libraries in your in your local area. So if you hear of somebody uh, nearby that has a great event going on, uh, don't be afraid to say, hey, um, the library up the street's doing this awesome event on beekeeping. I thought you might be interested. Um, there's always things going around on library talk of, we were thinking of bringing in this presenter, um, you know, share the cost, share the publicity burden, uh, find a nice big meeting room to host it in and work together. Um, it's such a such a great way to introduce people in your community to other resources that are nearby. Um, we've talked a lot about community members with special interests. Uh, people might be more likely to come to a program that um, Bob is doing on upcycling furniture uh, because they know Bob and they know he does cool things. Uh, so definitely tap in to your local um, expertise and of course your local businesses as well in your town and others nearby. Your civic groups are always going to be a huge important part of your uh, summer programming. Of course they um, are some of your first stops for donated prizes and that sort of thing, uh, but they're also a great place um, to recruit attendees, uh, to advertise your events, uh, to even recruit speakers. A lot of these people are leaders in the community. Same goes for your uh, Chamber of Commerce, your church quilting ladies, um, all of these types of things, uh, great places uh, to be. We mentioned ISU Extension. There's also things like your county conservation group and that sort of thing um, that could be very helpful. And then, um, of course, we are always saying that uh, this might mean you know, getting out of the library, gasp. Um, and I don't think this is going to be news to a lot of you, but just hear from the state library, the license to say, hey, uh, one of my favorite examples I heard recently was the library's open night was, was Thursday night. And then Little League, those darn Little Leaguers, changed their game night to Thursday night. So now everyone was at Little League and no one was at the library. But do you know what the library did? We're going to keep our open hours on Thursday night, but we're going to set up a table at the Little League game. They brought crafts for the siblings of baseball players to do. They brought book carts and other things that kids and adults could browse. And uh, they went where the people were. And I think that was probably a much better image for the library than just uh, sitting around and... Um, wishing for somebody to come knock on the library door when everyone was out watching the Little League game. Uh, we also had a really cool um, Go Where the People Are Colonel uh, recently. I don't think I have a slide for this one, but um, in Rhinebeck, they just did a program. Uh, Lena Altman is the director there, but read all around Rhinebeck where they uh, engage with local businesses to do a sort of family time, interactive story time. Uh, so the business owner read a book, gave a tour, um, and they, it was a great idea to just engage the whole community. They had parents taking off work so that they could bring their kids to these fun things. Uh, a great place, a great way to be in the community where the people are. I think we can go to the next slide here. This um, example yeah. of this bingo sheet comes from page 146 of the programming guide. It's an eco-friendly bingo type of sheet you might consider using. You could use it for family activities or as an adult resource. Now, if you use it for adults only, you'll note that a couple of the boxes are definitely more kid related, such as making binoculars out of paper tubes. You might want to edit that one for your adults. Um, but many of these are ideal for adult participation, such as composting, visiting a local arboretum, riding a bike to the library instead of driving. Um, and I thought that this this bingo sheet tied in well with this article from the Nature Conservancy that includes eight ways to reduce waste. So there's some ideas there that you might be able to glean from that you could replace the kid-related uh, squares on this uh, kind of like a bingo sheet. But maybe you could use this as your adult participation thing, um, your uh, scorekeeper, if you, you will, your log, um, or as just a separate program. And speaking of logs, there uh, is an example on page 76 of the Getting Started section of the guide that is a basic summer reading and activity tracker. So 
Just as with kids, adults like to have a way to track their progress in the reading program. This is one of the most simple trackers, I think. It allows users to set their own goals rather than following a prescribed pattern dictated by the library. And you'll notice that this form includes reading and activities, uh, which I like for summer reading. I think this is a good way to encourage movement or healthy habits or recycling alongside of reading. And dun, 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 hot off the presses, uh, just posted yesterday to the State Library's website are the templates that um, Janae and um, Emily from the State Library have created and made available for you. These are fantastic resources. You definitely want to access these. They are customizable. There are bookmarks, game boards, bingo sheets, just all kinds of forms on here. The one that I have as an example here is for teens, but because these are customizable, you can just change that word teen to adults, get rid of the grade levels, and it's pretty much good to go to use for adults. And Janae just said that we also added a customizable calendar to put all your great events and programs on. So this is a tremendous resource. You can see how you can access it by going to the State Library's website, then choosing Libraries, Programs, Summer Library Programs. And if you scroll down on that page, you will see it there. So really cool resource. And this next slide shows a few more examples from those customizable templates that we're providing. There are bookmarks that can be used as logs, and there are also drawing slips. So if you have some prizes, which we'll talk about in just a moment, actually in the next slide we'll be talking about prizes, you can use those drawing slips. And I see that Sam has just uh, promoted the direct link to how to get to those, um, those wonderful resources. Sam, what are we gonna talk about here? Let's scroll ahead and see. So we always love to, um, you know, reward our attendees for listening, prizes for attending, for coming, for reading. Prize is also a great way to engage local businesses and other local donors, um, a great way to collaborate um, with with folks in your, with businesses or commerce uh, places in your town um, who might get a little free advertising from the library. Um, so along the idea of read, renew, repeat, we've got our prizes divided into this, uh, those categories as well. Um, uh, read books, yes. Uh, maybe also um, give away kinds of books that people wouldn't normally read. Uh, graphic novels, for example, uh, if that would be something that uh, might be a fun prize to get. Um, gift cards to um, local bookstores or, or bigger chains. Um, also a great option, um, a reading journal. If you want ideas on a successful reading journal, Janae's your your gal. Uh, she's a, a fabulous journaler, and um, it's a, just a fun analog way for folks to keep track of what they've read and what they thought about it. Um, some really fun options out there. Of course, a gift basket with reading-related items. Uh, maybe it includes a book journal. Maybe it includes things uh, that you might like uh, to have with you while you read, like a cozy blankie or a tea mug or something like this. Um, and then this is a fun idea, um, coupons for your own annual book sale. So if your friends of the library do a book uh, do a book sale or a, a material sale every year. Why not say, hey, here's here's 20 free dollars. That might be 20 books, uh, depending on how you price your items. But um, a great way to just get some of those things moving off of your shelf and uh, connect to people with fun things to read. Uh, for Renew, of course, you've got a lot of environmental or outdoor type options, gardening, um, maybe uh, connecting people with a local uh county or state park, perhaps, maybe a, a night a night in the woods <laughs> camping uh, type adventure would be fun. A spa package, of course, we talked a lot about adult adult coloring things when we were in, uh, in the programming section. And then um, upcycled or handmade crafts, also a great, a great giveaway. When we talk about repeating, I mean, I'm going to fly through these. We've got um, just a couple of minutes left in this section, but um, maybe a weekly prize or a monthly prize, a book of the month club type thing, um, healthy living basket, can, annual passes. Go ahead, Marianne. You can see where my mind is. I was thinking if you have a local bakery in your town, would they be willing to give away a free donut 
every week or a free donut every month. You know, you could go to the bakery and get a, a donut a week. It would be so fun, I think. <laughs> Just anything that, that you would be, repeat. That would be a great prize. And I would definitely eat a homemade donut a week. That would be no problem. I could too. <laughs> All right. What do we have next here? Again, we're going to have to fly through some of these uh, mm -hmm. upcoming slides here. Um, very quickly, let's look at promotion. Um, I think uh, just having displays, uh, flyers, mailings, curated lists such as habit forming or how to or self help. And don't forget about direct marketing to local career clubs, organizations, garden clubs, any of those organizations that have something to do with what the theme entails. Don't hesitate to directly contact them. Um, business windows, make sure you're publicizing outside the library. Um, a lot of Libraries have had great success publicizing at local pubs and restaurants. These were a few um, display ideas. This would be a great time to promote your how-to books. Instead of this year I will learn how-to, you could put this summer I will learn how-to and put some of your how-to books on display. Um, read green, whatever books you have that are uh, more of an ecology theme title would be a great time uh, to put those on display. And this next one, we have a webinar for that. Janae just recently did a Pop YS live webinar that's all about displays, the good, the bad, the ugly. And although it was um, a youth services webinar, it definitely carries over with its concepts into adult displays as well. And you could even see that one of the examples she included was one that was called Read, Return, Repeat, which could be a great one to incorporate for summer reading. ALA has this um, basic promotion guide. You can see there's the link there. And I know that the, um, the slides, the links, the resources that we're sharing here will be made available to you at the end of our, um, of our session when we post the recording. So don't fret if you don't get the details about the URL there. Just remember that you can tailor any of these ideas or the ideas in the manual for you and your library. You've got to remember that a one approach does not fit all. You have to find what works for you as a librarian and a person. And some considerations, I know some of you are brand new to this, so here are some things for you to think about. How many staff members do I have? If you're a one-person librarian, um, scale back a little bit because you don't want to be overwhelmed and burn out over the summer. What are some of the skills and talents that your staff has, as well as those of maybe your trustees or local um, residents? How much space do you have and what's your budget? Think about your community. What are their interest abilities? Um, maybe the ability to get to the library or to work with technology. What are their ages and the demographics? And again, if this is your first year to run a summer reading program, do not attempt to do the exact same thing that your neighboring librarian who has been doing this for 30 years is doing. Um, there is no need for you to replicate exactly the same as the other uh, neighboring librarians. Don't forget to utilize outsiders, as we have said multiple times, community members, ISU Extension, county conservation. Um, perhaps consider some shared programming with other libraries. Do some passive program and remember the acronym KISS. Keep it super simple. Um, and don't think that you have to run your program all summer long. It does not have to be a three or four month long program. You can do it for one month. You can do one program a week instead of five a week like the, the bigger library down the road does. So just keep it simple and make it work for you. Okay, so I always like to ask the question at the end of this webinar, uh, and you'll put this in your CE evaluation too, of course, but after we wrap up today, what's at the top of your to-do list after this webinar? What are you... What are you wanting to tackle next with regards to adult programming in the library this summer? Yes. Yeah, Nick Nick has a great example here of a library who, for whatever reason, uh, needed to make summer work for them. The whole summer program happened in two weeks. You know what that's called? A summer reading program. Summer reading. And it counts for the annual survey. So I'm not saying it's the right thing to do for every library, but if that's right for your library, hey. Make it work for you for this year. All right. So what are folks, what's what's next on your to-do list after you leave 
the webinar today besides, you know, eat lunch. Let's let's take lunch for granted here. And I'm setting up our breakout rooms for the record. Creating displays. Yes. Oh, running See ideas what... past other staff members too. I think that's good. Resource manual and the graphics. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> Get a recycle yeah, bin. Buying a... Yeah, I like that. And in fact, um, there was a slide I didn't include because of time constraints, but um, a library at Northbrook, Illinois, their public library actually has recycling bins in the lobby for paper, for bottles, for cardboard, and they are a collecting station for those types of things. So I thought that was really cool. Maybe this oh, is, is the time really that you partner nice. with Public Works about their... Um, uh, the garbage trucks and the recycling aspects and have them do a yeah. presentation at your library. If you're in a town with a lot of um, apartments or places that don't have on-site recycling facilities or on-site site recycling pickup, maybe there's a sanitary and effective way you can collect some of those materials for people who don't have that option. I like Tammy's comment. Pick one idea. Focus on that and develop an adult summer program. That's a great way, especially if you've never done a summer reading, that's a great way to get started. Yes, absolutely. Well, good enough. Um, I think the next thing up on our list here is that we always like to invite you uh, to talk to each other. That's always a highlight of what people love about planning for summer is, um, you know, getting the state library staff to talk, stop talking for long enough uh, that you can talk to each other. And so we are absolutely de delighted to do that. Uh, we have three lovely facilitators here who will guide us through some different questions. Um, if you veer away from the questions, if you have questions of your own you wanna ask, um, that is absolutely okay as well. But at this point, if you would like to drop off and not participate in those discussions, you certainly may. Uh, so thanks everyone who was able to join us. And uh, thanks to Marianne for putting this together and persevering through tech problems.